It's okay. Yep. This is the place where I was born. See, small town, they call Cerreto. Hey. What year was that? Eh? What year? You well, uh, the 89. 1889? Yeah. 1889, when I was born. Then. And at uh, the age seven, you know, I was to go to church over here. See? And after that, I used to serve, you know, church and everything. F finally, one day I was look over there to the mountain and I said to my grandmother, I said, hey, grandma, where the sun goes when that goes over that mountain over there? And she says, well, that goes in the sea. See, go in the water. And I said to her, she says, well, that's where I want to go to see where the sun goes. See, well, we went to school, you know, a year or so after. He was a uh, school being canton. Now is that. We, we took out two big globes from, you know, the wall over there. That was uh, the map on it. They used to call it the Idumondi, you know. Well, we put it on the floor, we connect them together. We find out Russia, Alaska, it was only 15 miles distant from one to another. See? Says that, well, then the teacher says, that thing is enough. He says, I, I am here to teach school, that you, you boy to teach me, you know, like that. Well, that become, I become a little stronger. And I used to work over here in church. And one day, the, 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 the old house where the priest used to live, and they, they want to make a municipal, you know, uh, plaza and police. And they have to move. And he's back up the mind to build a house right where the church is. See, that's where they made church in there. And I used to work in there, clean up the brick for two cents a pieces. Yeah, see, right there. And one day we went down in the center column, sink. We didn't know it underneath, it was a, a tunnel. See, and the thing went down over there. We had to start over again, and there was only nine, something like that, to, to work in there. But I worked just the same, and I saved some money. And uh, that become school, till when I was 11 year old, that when I passed my seven, you know, school and everything. I used to go over night school, and this house over here. This is the one they used to take care of the uh, what you call say, father take care of the church, you know, was there, and he used to teach at night school, and I, I went to school till I was around uh, 14 year old. Then my father says, "The time you're gonna earn some money, not to spend your time school, and uh, out of the church you go to school, but out the school you go to the church." Well. You eat and drink like anybody else, but uh, some something. Well, finally, I start working, you know, to selling wine down to the rice, where they used to raise up the rice. You know, we had a lot of wine for sale. And uh, first I went over there with a champion, you know, small bottle, and sell it who wants it, you know, who wants a hundred liter, liter, or fifty, something like that. I put, we used to come back again, put in a wagon with the, those small barrel and everything, and deliver it like that for a couple of years and like that. And finally, the fella used to go over there, make the gang, you know, to go and uh, they call a Monday rice, rice. He says, uh, well, why don't you come work, you get a couple of bags of rice. You're strong enough. My, my, my age, 15 years, was told to go over there 
to, you know, to cut the rice and everything. Two weeks, you get to Quintoy, to work over there. I went. In the third year, he says, well, what would you take care of that? That's where I make up my mind to see the sun where it go. See? Yeah. See that? And it says, now it's time to move out of here. They, they want, you know, me to earn something, but they don't earn enough. I ask. Uh, first, I told the, the priest, he says, you remember, I said, I want to go to see the sun where it goes. He says, yeah, that's what I, I knew right away. You was you had crazy idea. He says, well, it's no crazy idea. That, that well, you open up, you know, your mind when you get that age. All right. I borrow the money. Uh, How much money did you have? A lot? Uh, Three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, to get in that time to go New York. You know, when you're here in New York, you, we used to go through Ellis Island that time, where the States of Liberty. You know, you don't go through no more, but that time, you have to go through there. Well, I went in there. <coughs> went in there. We get out of the boat, uh, well, in a boat, funny thing uh, happened too. You know, uh, uh, morning, oh, two days before, oh, I was feeling good. And the third day, hey, hey, you know, all the women, they was born together, all the men go born together. The one of them born there, that was uh, a woman they become Walter's mother. See, it wasn't that bunch. But we don't know nothing. We don't know them. They don't know uh, us and everything till when we got married and we find out she was in the same boat where I was. And we talked together before we got to New York and everything. We got to New York, we lost trace each other. And uh, when we got to New York, it's time to let me out, they put me in cage over there. And uh, Ellis Island over there. It was a bunch of all young ones, you know. They had to have a company to get in. Other way, with that company, they don't let you get in. See? Well, I was the last one in a cage. And a fella come over there, a oh, big fella there, with a stick in his hand, with a long coat, you know, and a uh, and, uh, what you call helmet you know, with, with two, <laughs> two faces. And he was talking with the, with the judge there and everything. The judge gave him a cigar and the father said good night and walked away. Right there in that room, in there, he asked me, he says, how much money you got? Well, I got $61. See, I had more than that. But, uh, that was the limit, $61 to get in. Well, and he says, well, what are you going to do in California with that, that mass, uh, much money you got? You ain't got much money in there. He says, well, there's a lot of other young people over there. Probably they got less than what I got in my hand now. I says, I never heard anything complain. Nobody around to complain about if they dead or, or nothing. He says, oh, no, but look. Uh, over here they break a lot of law. I guess I can break this one myself. See? And he says, okay. And he says, it was a, a colorful over there, sweeping the floor. He called that fellow and he says, take the suitcase, bring it down on the boat. He got a hold of things. Soon he put his hand on, that, the strap broke, everything went on the floor. <laughs> Finally, he picked that up and everything. And we went, you know, on a, on a boat. It took us a Lackawanna Railroad from there. And, and the, the judge uh, paid for the for the feed. And uh, then he told the, the fellow that to get me a box, you know, bread and sardine, ketchup, you know, bologna and everything for the, for the trip. That's what he did. You're going to go right up to California? Yeah. And uh, then uh, we made, and he says, remember, soon you get there, right. 
because it was an Italian fellow, you know, I could only stand and everything. You write right away, so I know you got there. Okay. Maybe it was about a, about two days out of New York there. Yeah, I ran out of bread. I mean, time, it was two other girls in there. They was go San Francisco there. And uh, one of the girls says, says uh, yes, we got the bread either. He said, if you go get bread, get some for us. Well, I didn't know how much you pay for the bread. I says, I went in the bakery over there, and uh, I gave him a dollar there, he gave an armful of bread. In the meantime, outside, that they were switching those uh, wagon you we was uh, we was on, and I, I was afraid, you know, with those bam 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 they move around, and I I ran out of the door there. I happened to be man and a wife with a kid. Well, they heard all that noise. They turned around, and I uh, I jumped, but I knocked the kid down <laughs> down on the sidewalk, you know. But I ran uh, just to Sam to catch the train. In the meantime, the worst too, the backer, they was running outside with a change. Holler to me, he said, hey, you change, hey, like that. The people, uh, the people thought they was hold up, you know, to do that. Well, finally, they sell it up. Anyway, that I was free because it was no call, no help, you know, mine to do that. Well. And we, we didn't have nothing no more till when we got down Los Angeles. Good company and everything. When we got, when we got down in Los Angeles, he said, let's take a ride. So it was all black. You know, there, uh, towards the uh, emigrant train, that time used to run from, uh, from New York down to San Francisco, and then come through the north back to New York. Emig they used to emigrant emigrant car, too. Oh, they used to change each and every brass, the comp uh, railroad company. It was there. Well, finally, uh, we got there. Let's take a ride. We took a ride. Those cab, you know, it was no automobile that time. It was, you know, horses. We were down to go, happy to go down the, the road that goes down the uh, riverside over there. And we, it was beautiful outside. It was a river on the side there. Nice view, you know, to your left. He kept on going, and time went by. And we had to be back at 2 o'clock to, to go on the train again. And it was more than 2 o'clock, we was still in there. Finally, the, the, the cab says, hey, you follow, you don't suppose to be on a train you don't know what he was saying, yeah. And he, and he point by, behind, says, hey, see that fellow over there running down like crazy with a horse and everything, that after you follow. And I, I said, well, turn back. You know, you know, to turn back. He did turn back. And uh, that father there was so mad. Before, he never took it, Spanish or anything. But then he come in. To give us a hell, he was talking Spanish, you know. And we got to, to the depot, uh, San Francisco, I mean, uh, Los Angeles, is a 3-4 station, not only one. We was a union station, remember, because it was two big pine trees right on the front there, one on each side the door. That, that's what I remember the last time I went down there. Well, anyway, we went on a, on a train. And uh, we uh, travel all night. We got San Jose around nine o'clock in the morning over there. It was there, but where where to go? We had no, you know, uh, no address to go. See, because the fellow that was accompanying me, they sent it back. See, he was sick. They sent him home. They says we don't want no sick people. Who uh, Well, we got to, well, we got to do something. Somebody gonna pick us up. The girl says, I'm thirsty. Well, I see a wagon over there full of watermelon. You know, I went over there and bought watermelon, big one for 10 cents. And we had no knife. 
And when over there, I broke them things right on the sidewalk, you know, and I just start eating them things, one piece bigger than the small. And then before we got through, it was half white and half black, you know. And, uh, and then we used to throw pieces, one here, one there and everywhere. Then we fall asleep. You'll fall asleep and we fall asleep. First thing we know, a policeman got there. Policeman, yeah, we don't know what I would say anyway. Yeah. Finally, the uh, old man there was coming out of the house there. He came over there, done the same thing, give a cigarette, a cigar to the policeman. Police guy to salute the other one. Yeah. Soon the policeman was far from here and he turned on us and he says, Spurka <laughs> you know? yeah. Dirty pig, you throw. So uh, you think you are in the old country, you can throw everything all over like that. Over here is different. There's a back of the house, there is a stuff where you could put, put that stuff in it. Clean that up and bring it over there. Went over there. Meantime, the old lady come out of the house. She said, Oh, don't be like that with those kids. Can you see they tire and everything? Can you see they want to wash the face like that? So plenty of water back there. Outside that was water plenty. We walked in the meantime, time to eat, and they sent us to, you know, to, to work. Yeah. Well, uh, stop the minute now. Sorry, sir. Well, you can go. Yeah. Okay. The, but after you know, we passed through all that thing. Yeah. We. We went to San Francisco just to say when we got there. We got a job, work, you know, clean up here, yeah, clean up and there. It was still uh, broke, everything. And uh, that's where I found those pictures, you know, uh, three months late. You know, horse, dead, building all crooked and done uh, and everything. It was street, they was still broke. You know, and everything like that. And uh, but finally, they they knew we was too young. And we, and they knew we don't uh, speak uh, English, thing like that. They was trying to kidnap to go down to out. It was raining. It was on the winter, but they ran a lot, you know. And night, we get out of there. We run away from there, and we land again, San Jose. When we got there, that's where I got the job with all them dogs. See? You got them, them dogs over there. That woman that was nuts. She was want to adopt me for take a place. Her boy, she lost. See? Yeah. It was a beautiful place there. They used to call Evergreen. Only about seven miles from San Jose. That's all. Yeah, but you could uh, say uh, the whole city t together because you leave the house to go down the city. It was a house on both sides there. You don't know if it was uh, San Jose or Evergreen. Yeah. But anyway, I, I spent in there about, about a year anyway, like that. Finally, for cook, I had a Japanese. Uh, but he was jealous because it was, it was, the, the boss was paying too much attention to me, then it was uh, uh, to him. One day the boy says, hey, Joe, can you paint that little room? I used to sleep, it put me sleep in uh, uh, the big house where the, the old lady lived, you know, and a woman from Los Angeles, she climbed, she was uh, her sister anyway. And uh, Joe, back that looked good for everybody. You see the stand. Well, all right. He, she, he bought that color, you know, the only powder. And uh, well, use that. If he get now, we get some more. Gonna mix it up. Yeah, mix it up and everything with water, you know. And uh, paint it. But you don't know if it was close way or the other way. It was all mixed together. And then it was another color, different color. 
But for three, four cars, the yellow, that one day, he says to me, he says, hey, Joe, what do you, what, what do, you do? You uh, get the flag for Garibaldi? And it looked like <laughs> there's so many uh, color uh, all mixed together. And he said, I guess we're going to put somebody else to finish off that work. OK. And I says, well, that would I come my mind. I says, Jesus, I wish I can do something else. Batista, that fellow, that Italian fellow, no? his name was Batista. Batista used to be a, a, a messy, you know, can't get out of that stuff. Over there, to dry fruit, they, they drive right in the yard, big yard, they got level, and they got the track, those little track, they got a little carriage to, to fit those track. And they got the turnout, I think, about five feet. Uh, diameter, you know, and uh, that uh, when you want to turn your car, you go right there, turn your car, the race you where you want to go, like that. And uh, he said, hey, Joe, but but uh, said you can make uh, concrete to make that thing. Oh, sure, that was my my work. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Start to you know, a new old country, they they use concrete to make it like that. He used to, uh, to use uh, that, uh, that is not a uh, line, but it's pretty like line. Like a clay? Yeah. And uh, as soon as it get wet, pl plastic, you know, as soon as it get wet, hard up. And then uh, over there, we used to put all the, the brick, lay down all the brick first put about half an inch of sand underneath. Then, and put those bricks about half inch distant from another. Then get that uh, plastic, you know, liquid, and uh, dump it right on. Yeah. Oh, ten minutes, you couldn't step on it, you never break that, you know. And instead, I do it with concrete. Not much better. No? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, then I put the stuff, cement, and then thing, you know. Put it right on top. Yeah. Uh, and mix it up, you know, soft. Then I put it right on top. But I think this thick. And it just start running down the hill over there. and done about half a mile, you know. <laughs> look, the, the boss come home. From work, see the concrete, you know, down the, <laughs> the street over there. He says, Joe, he says, uh, uh, you made a place there to turn out, or you make the concrete on the road there. <laughs> well, anyway, and he says, well, it want, don't want to stink, you know. He go right down over there. He says, how you make it? <laughs> I told him. And that father of the Batista says, I told him that the right way. I says, you know how to make it? <laughs> and he said, well, I guess <laughs> I got to make it myself. All right, right there, all right. Well, that closed, all right. But uh, now, uh, say it again about, uh, about the Japanese. Meantime, the Japanese was so jealous about me in there. One day, Dunor, he put a, a plate over there. Uh, ants, those big black ants, uh, roasted on top of the, the steak, you know, big steak. He uh, put that thing right there. Eat. And I said, his name was Morris. He says, hey, Morris, look, uh, so many ants in there. I don't want to eat that stuff. He says, if, you wanna, if you're hungry, you start, you can eat that. I says, I am hungry, but I'm not so hungry to eat ants, anything like that. He had a knife in his hand. He threw that knife, and he really landed about two feet from me in the door. He went over. And I was sitting at the table. I just bent down, got a hole down the leg, ripped it up. And I, I just get up, I broke that door away, <coughs> but the, the Japanese was uh, 
quicker than me. And he ran away and never see him again. See? But the, the Yerevan just to say, two, three years after, we was, uh, when I was working for the company at that time, was driving horses. And uh, I used to, uh, the Japanese to pick grapes, big gang, you know. They had more than a thousand acres of grapes to be picked. Japanese was there picking grapes. And our, our uh, driver used to go over there, four horse team. We'd load a big wagon, 400, 450, those grape boxes, you know, to go. I went over there, the first load I went over there. Nobody wanted to help me. Then, and I says, hey, you follow. I says, you pay, nobody else or anything. Everyone that was, you know, working, picking grapes and bring it over right near the driveway and everything, but nobody covered up. That's, uh, you know, I got mad and I called it name, you know, boy. So just send me a few, uh, touch a pile of uh, leaves and everything just blow up in, in the air. We're going to come up with those long knife like that. Bro. Good thing, each wagon had a pick. Oh, you got to get that pick. Knock it down and uh, leave you handle free. I used to get a, get a hold of that thing and I, I hit the horse, the horse start running. And then for a day, about a dozen after me, you know. But I didn't let it come in. So one by I used to swing it with that pick. They, they didn't trust me. Yeah. In the meantime, the, the big boss, it was Enos. Big boss, he had white horses. You could, you could spot them about two miles away because it was only a little road, they have dirt, make a lot of, uh, you know, dirt go up. When they, they, they saw him coming, each one went back. And, uh, and each one, they went over there, hey, you want to load it up, come on. Don't uh, load around, I ain't got time, you know, foxy. When they come back, they had the big boss come around. I didn't want to tell him what happened, but he saw that he says, what happened? He used to call me Srai. See, uh, the, the, the name, Piamonte, they call it Srai. It's that uh, in Italian, they call it Ceretto. Okay. Well, anyway, he says, uh, you know, that cost to, uh, to feed the horses, and of course, for a man to work overtime to bring that stuff down to the winery, you know, give them a hell. Well, nothing happened no more till the end of the, 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 the picking grapes. That's what we used to, I told you, we used to go down on Gilroy. I used to play harmonica, uh, you know. And uh, Angelo, that fellow, uh, I don't know if I told, told you or not yet. Well, anyway, well, it was uh, it was brought up to the big boss in there. His name was Ines Angelo, too. Well, anyway, we used to go there, and I used to follow around. And uh, the bar we used to go, his name it was Mainero, Mainero. It was slack man in the town, chief of police, chief fireman. But they used to run the town anyway, the, itself. Well. <coughs> I mean, we were safe in there, all right. Well, the Japanese, the city we was big gang in it, especially Spanish, you know, Mexican and all that. So it was a, a big spread in there. It's not, uh, used to call uh, Miller. Miller, I mean a thousand. There are Miller, a thousand, thousand acres in there. From Rocky down to Guerrero. And the, those fellows, they used to work in that to support themselves. Well, anyway, they left us alone in there. And I stayed there, oh, more than a year. Then uh, the poor near the end, <coughs> type uh, Labor Day. We were speaking peaches. And the followed by the name Frusot. He says to me, hey, Sri, you know, the 
charrette to that. That's right. What do you say? We go in the old country. Stupid. They say, yeah, let go. See? And uh, we finish up there. And I, uh, oh, we love the thing. Before that thing happened, I had uh, not fight, but argue with the, the big boss there. Because the, uh, the big boss, the stuff there, he told me, he says, listen, I know the, what the hell is Dave? Ross, anyway, he don't like you because he had a young wife, and that wife, uh, uh, Portuguese or Spanish, uh, is after the young people. Every, every night, Bernays, she used to meet us behind the big barn there, like that. You try to get away because uh, if you don't get away, they uh, they gonna get you with a knife. See, but, but that's what I didn't want to believe. And he says, the boy says, don't go down pick any more peaches. Let the peaches stay right there, because I don't want to have no fight over here. He says, I don't want to start. I know you don't start, but somebody else is gonna start it. He says, okay, I didn't go over there. And I had an easy job and they fill up the bar. It was 150 people working in there, you know, without the Japanese. They fill the bar, only half a bar to each person to, to eat. And I helped the woman clean up the table, feed the woman. Then they, it gave me the job to bring the stuff to the, the people that were, was uh, out. And uh, because at noon hour, instead to let that come home to losing time, they used to eat right in the place where the, I used to have a horse with a big fat full of uh, meat and potatoes and everything. Bread, the bread, those fried bread that big. Used to, I used to get it myself. Half a loaf, hey, I used to eat half a loaf at a time. Well, anyway, went over there. And a, a little good time till then when they meet that free soap to go in the old country. Then we went over San Francisco, we got there. We find out we couldn't get no money from the bank because uh, the bank closed a Labor Day. He says, now what are we going to do? I said, well, we're going to stay here tomorrow morning. <laughs> we go down to San Jose and get the money. Yeah, we don't know anybody over here, you go in there. The, you know, San Francisco is half empty, empty on, the, uh, on the ground. You know, the, uh, uh, China, you know, they go from one street to another, not outside, and they need the ground, see? And it's let's get out of here. So uh, I says, I'm going to buy a book. I went to buy a book, went in there, and I meet a woman from the town where, from not the Sri, the Piwa. Piwa is only from here to there, you know, you can throw stone from one place to another. I went over there, oh dear, come on, come on. And over there, you meet such and such over there, there's a lot of that they come over there. She was, she was one they, you know, had to narcotic, you know, to go in there and then get that drunk and then steal the money. We had the, that uh, door there, door not very big. You go in there and she disappeared. There was nobody in there but me and that fellow by the name Prusso. And I said to Prusso, he says, hey, you got a revolver? I had a, a revolver, 22 I had in my pocket. And I had one. He says, yeah, I got one. Well, all right then. Let you back up. And I, I go ahead and see if it is. Jesus, soon we near the door, a big fella come out. The dealer, uh, he had it there. He says, where are you far going? He says, well, I have to buy something, then we'll be back. He says, oh, no, you're not going out of here. He says, oh, yeah, we go. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, see, this thing is a small, but close like that, <laughs> it'll bite. Well, and we ordered him to stay in us, so he was out of in there. Oh, that was the last. But 
Then another thing happened. When we were in Salt Lake City, there, we went in a... Well, how'd you get to Salt Lake City? Eh? Where'd you go to, from San Francisco to Salt Lake City? The, no, it was a go, uh, we was going to Italy. Oh, oh, okay. See, from uh, San Francisco to... We went to Net, was a one long ride, but we went through. Well, we went in there. Uh, it was in a deep over there. Uh, it was a you know, toilet. We uh, was in a toilet. We had, uh, and the first thought, it says, Jeez, uh, this time we can say, uh, this is Chipiso, not <laughs> Chicago, you know. And the woman, uh, <laughs> two women, next toilet, as a back. And then, quiet, nobody say anything. We get out, woman they was out there laughing, we were laughing, and we were uh, quieted. We lost the boat, New York had to uh, leave to the same week. We had to wait next week to get to leave New York with the other woman to get in the old country. What year the, was this? Do you remember what, how long? Huh? What, do you remember what year? 1912. 1912? Yeah. Then when we went back in Italy. Yeah. Because I got married in 1913. See? That's all. Well, uh, I guess you better close your negotiation. Why? Huh? So, what, no, but what happened when you went back to Italy, though? Oh, over there? Yeah. Uh, Did you meet Grandma? Yeah, everything. That you have, that was uh, my mother there. See, when I went, soon I got home, they were surprised to see me there. See? Because I didn't say anything. Yeah. See? My mother says, oh, you there, I'm glad you got home. We got a lot of work over here. It was over there at the time. That was a hay, it was the wheat, it was beans, corn, everything to be harvested, you know. And, uh, and uh, one of my brother, uh, my father says, well, if you want to drink over there, I need the place there. There's a bottle in there, enough for a regiment. Over there, they fill up the, the bottle, then they put it down in the sand, only leave the, the top out. And the, the wine uh, mat mature in there, you know, get good. One of my boys says, oh, it's you. He went out, went over in America, got money and everything, come home with a pocket full of money. And we working over here like slaves now. Uh, he come over here to eat. He says, don't, uh, you don't have to. Thank you that. That was a, a big, uh, what you call, a flower mail in there, right side there. One of our cousin was in there with a load of bag to have a mail. And I met him and he says, hey, just the one I like to know. He says, you got a good wine. I know you got a good wine. I really was making good wine. He says, I want about 140 liter, you know, that wine. Can you bring it down for Sunday morning? Oh, sure, anytime you want it. Bring it for Sunday morning. He brought that down. In the meantime, I made a big long table right in the yard there. And I went to the, went to the back, eh? the, the Fior, it was uh, named Jacquard, went in there and uh, put down a chest, the best bread, he made good bread anyway, but uh, down over there. And uh, then to the butcher there, get all the, car, uh, the meat, good. Then I get the cook. He come down, cook. And uh, there was no more stingy than for uh, my brother. The other one, he was eating and drinking till one, every one day he was uh, with a head on top of the table. See, to drink that wine. Well, anyway, I guess that's the end. That's the end? Yeah. Oh, when, when did you, you must have come back here because you're here. Oh, over here? Yeah. Oh, geez. When did you come back? 
1913. 1913? Only, I didn't stay a, a whole year over there. Look, from, from a, a Labor Day, and I left the 19... Yeah. 1912? Yeah. Hey. And you came back? Come back, come back. you were already married? You got married? No. No? Uh, I had no idea to get married. It was... <laughs> It was a, we was, me and my brother, followed down uh, Holland, okay. And, uh, you know, the, your grandma and her sister, they was passing by. And uh, I met them the day before in a little town over there, they was dancing and everything. And I didn't talk, I just uh, left the town, I just, I just go home because I didn't want to get, uh, you know, yeah. Well, soon he see them, hey, we need some help over here. He says, come on, give us that walk around. We got the stuff here to cut that thing. Oh, boy. That was the, the, the trick. Uh, soon I got home, my mother says, hey, uh, the, over there, they used, they used to call them sick. You know, they sick, they want you tonight over there in their house. They want to talk. I know right away what happened. <laughs> because both women, they joined together, you know, they make a plan to put uh, their girl to, to, because she was right near, you know, yes. uh, house to house. Well, I went over there the first thing I knew. Soon I get that it, uh, over there, before you get in the yard, it's all closed, you know, the big door, double, because uh, they go in with the, with the team and everything, with a load, just figure it up. And uh, well, it was underneath there. Uh, you grab it was uh, there pulling that uh, pail full of water. You think I stayed there to help him? He says, you want to pull it, pull it yourself. Pulled that thing, went up, they was living upstairs, downstairs, in a, in a cellar. And uh, upstairs, and, uh, I was talking about, the first thing I told her, I says, don't think you come over uh, an American and uh, you find, you know, money hang up in the pants there. If you want to eat, you get to, to work. I says, no eat, no work. No work, no eat. Like that. Her sister, that you grab her, uh, from Canada, yeah. and he says, I don't care, I like it. Uh, I didn't like her well, because she's one of those, she used to be a dressmaker over there. And uh, then uh, your grandma, she used to work on the field all, uh, all day, you know. She says, and the, the last, he says, Well, you want me, you want her. He said, I don't want either one. Hey? Well, anyway, uh, then we left that way. Uh, day it was uh, raining a little bit, I couldn't work outside. And I said, the hell, let uh, go over there and see what they say. I went over there, and he was both and says, I'm running now because raining you come over. He says, yeah. You know, but use. You couldn't say nothing because you're stupid. Yeah. I stayed there about an hour. Then I left to go out. And I left the umbrella there. And I went up sight over from me to that house over there. And uh, the, the, you went from Canada and says, hey, That's right. You left your umbrella over here. He says, Well, I'll, I'll get it next day. She so says, ah, uh, 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 your grandma said, they used, over there, you, they, you, they used to call uh, Lucia. He says, she don't want to go to America no more. Oh, boy. <laughs> Good. you happy. <laughs> yeah. Through that umbrella, that I'd want to go up there. <laughs> and, uh, and she says, no, no just foolish. Okay. Up there. And 19 days, we got married. 19 days. Oh. Jim. Yeah, just a little bit before, yeah.
Well, that what the what the what, what happened, you know. We had a, we fix it up. Instead to to go like they they used to over there, you gotta go for three weeks before you get married. See, instead to marry us at two weeks. See, yeah. Then we have a good dinner, you know. We had the family on one side, the other the other side, you know. In Albergo, not uh, you know, in a r big restaurant there. We all in there. Everybody they drink like anything. And after that, we had the. It was a the like the candy store at that time. It was no automobile. It was automobile, but not the uh, yet uh, like bus or anything like that. We had to, to go with the. Two horses and uh, with those sitting, you know, follow, sitting right at the top there. You had to go in there. You went to the place they call they call Custard Mall. You got there. That, that in there there was a bus. We got there and we got to Turin. Then we got in Turin. We had to leave for our, you know, France. Uh, Ten o'clock at night. For a honeymoon? Yeah. The, from the ten o'clock at night you had to leave. My brother was gonna come over come over here too, you know, emo. He was gonna come over here. When he got there, I don't know what he uh, was thinking about. He disappeared. <laughs> he couldn't find him anymore. And I told this he probably went went home. And I took the uh, the bus, you know, short place there, but that bus there went in the old house there. He was there, he just left. And now where I'm going to take the same bus there back to the city when I got there. He was there. He says, I went, uh, went over to look for you, I didn't see you. Excuse, you know, like that. We went to the, the depot there and the train didn't wait for us. <laughs> he left. Well, I had to go where the, uh, the hotel, get room for him, and room for us in there. The train was leaving there early in the morning. And I had my, my good suit, it was in the trunk. When I got a hold of the trunk to move around, I read that suit. Well, your grandma had to uh, fix it before we got down. We go down train left again. We had to wait another two hours to get the uh, train for our hour that uh, France. But the nature of Italy, France, the other, so close together. We got there. When we got Moderna there, you know, I was, uh, well, I had the first paper over here. Uh, they had uh, belonged to the old country there to go in the army. Soon we got the bird of nature there. <coughs> I said to my brother, he says, look, you stay here. No danger for him because he was young. <coughs> and uh, not for me, I'm 20 years old. They, they got to pack right away. This is the beginning of World War One, right? Yeah. And I went there. And the, the high guard over there. I could see that those two big fellas there. You know, with those uh, white stripes coming down the side there. And well, they carry a big sword, but they're long and a gun. They got a uh, rifle, you know. Get in one car, come back to the other car till the end. And I was watching them. When they was uh, one car, I used to come back, get up from this car. They come down, and they see them, they look in the other one. Time I went on the other one, I climb on the other car, see? And in the meantime, the train starts again for hours. When we got there, I was lucky, good too. When I got the uh, best mode out of there, it was an Italian fellow for guard then, too. It was checking the trunk and everything. He happened to know, you know, your grammar. 
They said, oh, Lucy, where are you going? I go, I'm going to America. With who? Uh, that monkey, monkey over there. <laughs> well, anyway. And he says, hey, monkey, get the hold of that uh, trunk. Put on the shoulder, jump that table over there. Bring it over there. You don't come back. <laughs> you know, they was looking for me again, see? And like that, he passed there. Clear. It's over. So, you know, uh, in New York, that's what happened, see? New York, we, we didn't have to go through the Ellis Island that time. That time when the, the paper they was all right, they pass you before you leave the the boat, you know, and you just get in, they come out there. We got over here at uh, 12 o'clock in the morning. And in the, New York? Uh, no, over here at uh, Pittsfield. Oh, Pittsfield. The uh, North Station over there. We got that, and uh, like that. And in there, the way we had to go, we had to go about a mile down on East, East Avenue, East Street. And uh, I say, they say, uh, there's no taxi, nobody, we had a trunk, uh, suitcase and everything. Since there's a broken down uh, taxi in there, you know, we're running. And uh, we call him and he says, well, mine is don't, don't run, but I, I help you follow to carry it. <laughs> carry the trunk, a suitcase. From there, he helped us to carry it down to the gas house. That is about a, more than a mile away than to where the General Electric uh, plant now over there. When we got there, uh, the, the, the fellow was there, he knew. They knew the old people and everything. Yeah, I'm sorry, but they got no place. But it's a uh, Joe. I forgot the name. I guess he's got a place over there. We went over there. The poor devil, they get out of their own bed to give us a bed. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we get in this country. Yeah. Did, you come here? Did you come here or where did you, you live? He was a, a peace field first. See, we stay over there and I got a job to dig a ditch for General Electric. Then they start the uh, sewer on uh, Newell Street, not far away from General Electric, there. And I uh, work in that till when it start frozen, when you could dig it anymore, because that time it was no machinery like, like today. And I used to use a pick. Well, anyway, I remember all that time, the 7th uh, March, and uh, I went over, there was, Oh, boat it was about 200 people on the gate watching to get the job from uh, General Red. They, they over there, each building they used to put a, a number. They used to call it 17, no building. I went over there and they, they asked me, no, no, no. And I was way back there. Well, he says, no, but I'm going to stay here, cold outside and everything. He says, I'll go back home. Turn around, and I follow top a little, a little short fellow. He says, hey, you. He says, you're looking for work? I says, well, if you're looking for work, why are you running? I says, go with that again. He called uh, call a fellow by the name Bob. He had a <laughs> crooked leg like mine, you know. He was making concrete. Hey, Bob, you need to follow to all of those uh, stone over? He says, no, but i let you know. He says, I'll get... Then he call up. He's probably... I forgot his name anyway, because I didn't have time to ask him. Pulled the other fellow there. That time they used to use uh, those oaks, you know, with a uh, carrot to start to use a truck, use them. Or you had to stay there, so many on each side, to, uh, with your feet on top of the speed there. Get ready soon, that thing is stopped, threw the stuff in there. That fellow there, I, drew, I, I threw one shovel full in. Second shovel, says, hey, you son of a bitch. Uh, when he say that, he says, hey, you son of a bitch, huh? I says, look, 
when I get, uh, they ba baptize me, they put a name on me. There's nobody gonna call me there. We had that show, hey, right in the face. <laughs> I broke the glass and the face and everything. Yeah. And then I start walking up. And then and they were at the uh, gate, and that far from top there, go back to work. He sent me back to work. And he got the other fellow there, says, you go in the office, clean your face up and get some other, some other job. <laughs> That's where I start with Friday line. I work till, till when I come over here. I come over here, a level day, look what a, what a, what a combination. I get, I left California a level, level day, and I get the job over here a level day. Uh, oh. Yeah. You know, <coughs> I was, uh, I was uh, from Pittsfield. We moved over here in, you know, Springfield. You know those two buildings uh, way up uh, Winchester Square to the left, white face there, uh, building. That's the first building I helped to to build in there. Finish up there, they start uh, commercial school. And I worked in that till when the school was finished. Okay. And uh, I went to school in uh, school in there too again. Yeah, I got my citizen people without go here and there or anything. Finish up school, finish up my paper. It was uh, it was cold Columbus Day, it was cold cold day. We was on top of the roof. <laughs> it was that uh, little uh, windy with the little eyes, you know. From there you could see top of the Connecticut River there. The the wind blew out that little little uh, ice from the the finishing. Mike, uh, the old man that is over here in I go home now. And he said, Hey Joe, what do you say? You gonna buy a farm? I get the good buy over there in I go home you're gonna buy that. I says, look Mike, I don't want to buy no farm. I said, boy, I've been working till now. Uh, now you're gonna buy a farm when it's cold like that. She says, well, but the farm is all right. You only work when you want, get what you want. And I got a job. I, I used to live down the Mechanic Street, Springfield. You don't know where Mechanic is. Mm -hmm. Well, you remember when there was a gas house with those four chimney? They turned it on. Probably a lot, probably before my time. <laughs> no, that thing is only turned down about six, seven years ago. Well, anyway. I was only 10 years old, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, there is a, the sign is still there. You see the sign of the car, like a street. We used to live in there. Get the, right in there. Get the side of the track that was too sharp. One, it was uh, making those buttons. The other one, they used to make electric button. You know, everything electric. I worked for 14 months in there. Now it's, that was cold outside, and then nice and warm. And I had only crossed the, uh, the right road to right there. And then one day the boy says, hey Joe, how do you like to, to be boss? He says, yeah, but I heard they're gonna move from here. He says, yes, that's why I ask you. They're gonna build another, place, we done uh, told me the name, out west, you know, and uh, if you want to go and look, it says, uh, ticket already paid and everything, just go down over there and look, well, take a chance, I went down and looked the place, well, as soon as I see the place, nothing done, went back, beside that, you know, your grandma, she was a family way, and uh, we don't want to move from there. That's where uh, Anna was born. Okay? That, that's why we used to, he was born in the cold part. <laughs> See? <coughs> yeah. Then uh, we, oh, over here it was Labor Day when I got this place. Labor Day? Yeah. Free Labor Day. You know, at that time, Labor Day, they used to build that on the end of the street, that near the river there, where the shopper garage there. We done all that was big places before you was getting to the water. And they used to, uh, <coughs> I meet Charlie, shrimp, 
the work over here in the drugstore. And, uh, and he says, hey, what, <coughs> 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 why don't you when, come over there in North Agro to buy a... What are you going to show off for my, for my father? Yeah. 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 He's going for the plug the picture. The end. You the, know? the end of it? Yeah. Alright. You know, now I tell you, well, you can close if you don't want to use it. Oh, we can. Ah. See. Right. No, I better probably close if I say. Something. Oh no, we got plenty. Yeah. Look the rat what they done. Oh. The rats? Is that what you got in the trap? Yeah. Alright, time for I think this battery's going. You got him in the trap? Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm sure you. 